What is it? Rebel without a cause? Rebel without a cause. There's a statue for James Dean up there. Yeah. None for Sal Minio, though. No. Yeah. I wonder why. Because they, because, uh. Because they're like, he was gay. He's gay. He but it wasn't James Dean supposedly maybe gay as well? I don't bisexual. Know. Bisexual? Yeah. Well, wouldn't Sal Minio have been bisexual as well? He probably had some pussy. If you have one piece of pussy, doesn't that make you bisexual? I don't think so. Really? I think you would have to, like, I think you would have to have pussy, mm. then have wiener, then have pussy. Do you think... I think if you had wiener and then you stayed with pussy for the rest of your life, I wouldn't even... So it. one fucking wiener in the mouth don't make you bisexual? I don't think so. Because, like, if you're... like spoken like a man who's trying to defend himself. Exactly. As a bisexual. <laughs> you're like, look, just because I suck one cock don't make me a bi. Yeah. Um, I think once a cock crosses your lips, you are technically gay. But here's my question. Whether, I mean, te- or at least technically bi. But here's my question. If a cock never crosses... I would say you've technically had a gay experience. Absolutely. But if you if you are... You know how people are born gay. Like, psychologically, yeah, yeah, genetically, yeah. whatever. Yeah. If you're gay... Yes. In every thought you have is of... If you're a man, every thought... Yeah, a boy, yeah, yeah. And every thought you have is a fucking cock and, like, a yeah. dude's ass looks sexy to you. But you've never... Had a cock in your hand, mouth, anywhere on or near your body. Yes. In, with the intention of sexual arousal. Yes. Can you technically be considered gay? I think that, yeah. Really? Just well, the, the my desire? My argument is that you are gay. To me, it's just like you gotta, it's gotta slap into your palm or. But then, te- so, so technically, do you think that you are. That you, before you have sex with a woman, you have no sexual orientation either? Well, I'm, I would say that I was straight leaning, but but my, my I don't thing think is, kids should be classified as gay or straight. It should just be like until you fucking until put you your fucking hands on suck something it or yeah. touch it, or until you, it's been on your fucking knee in a sexual way, or <laughs> anything. As soon as as soon as you interact with a sexual, body with a body part, whether it be but isn't that a physical manifestation of desire? And the desire part to me is your sexual orientation. Well, let me ask you this, then, based on that. Yes. If you constantly harbor thoughts of killing people, yet never kill anybody or anything, are you a killer? Um, I would say that your desire to kill somebody... But you wouldn't be classified as a killer, as um, a murderer. If I... As violent. Let's say you let never me, did a violent thing in your life, but you but always me, thought about but it. But let me put it this Every way. Every smodcast I record, I'm looking at you going like, I want to fucking tear his... His intestines out. If I had a, and if I actually <laughs> thought that intention was true, but if, it didn't come through, I kept it underneath and shit. Well, I mean, every I, time I lit a cigarette, that was me suppressing the urge to fucking take your thorax in my hands, crush your windpipe. But let me, if I put it in this context, which mm-hmm. is, if you harbor it and no one can ever tell, then like, are you a killer? Well, inside you have the desire to kill people, right? Now, if I let's say it was me, I'll reverse it. Okay. I have the desire to kill you, but Why I would mask you it so kill well. Me? We're friends. I mask it so well that <laughs> yes. that you you never know. But let's say like if at one point in time it came out yes. in a way that you thought was real. Yes. I didn't do it, but the intent was there. Like what? How? Like let's say you like fucking, let's a, say you, a lifelike re- representation you, of me. Let's say you play back the the pl- you play back the the Smodcast, right? Mm-hmm. And they're in separate channels. When people hear them now, they're mixed together. The right. originals were in separate channels. We tried that out, but yes. as we record them, they're in separate channels. So let's say like I unknowingly was murmuring <laughs> into the microphone. Yes, like. Some like fucked up stuff. You're muttering, about wanting like, to I want to fucking kill, kill this fat, fat kill fuck this like a turkey yeah. at yeah. Thanksgiving. Like, but I like <laughs> if you felt like real, like if through a series of events you're like, I think he actually wants to kill me, and I made you scared. Like, like I'm listening back to this podcast, and you're like, I'll send you to Wally World, you fat fuck <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> And I'm like, Did you, Jen, come here, listen to this. Does it sound like Moses saying he'll send me to Wally World, you fat piece of shit? I don't know if that's so threatening. <laughs> I mean, that would be disturbing, but... I would be like, how is he going to do it? Like, if you could somehow feel or experience what I was thinking, mm-hmm. and it made you scared, the fact that I haven't done anything to somebody else, I don't think it would matter. I think you'd be fucking afraid to be around me. <laughs> but it would make you a killer. 
It wouldn't make me a killer, but your fear would be because you exhibit because you're exhibiting the behavior of a killer, not physically, but like you're, you know, like if someone goes into a psychiatrist's office yes. and starts talking about how they're like about fucking fucked up shit, the psychiatrist isn't like the psychiatrist say he has homicidal tendencies, but he wouldn't say yes, but he's like, a killer. Yeah, but like if you he is like, let's say we have ground and we plant the seed of <laughs> like love and mm-hmm. we plant the seed of you know homicidal tendencies. Yes. It's like. Sowing two very different yeah. crops. <laughs> yes. We have two different crops. I mean, you're going to hope that one of them comes out of the ground versus the other. You're going to hope one doesn't <laughs> come, to, come to fruition. I'm like, you. I want you to tend this field up here. This is, uh, <laughs> a field this is the field of hate. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back yes. to the back 40, gonna, which is the uh, love yes. field. This is from the Time to issue, issue uh, October 18th issue of Time, 1976. But started by telling a dirty joke involving intercourse between a dog and a skunk. All right, not All right. bad. Yeah, I'd want to hear that. I want to hear that joke. When the when the conversation turned to politics, Boone, a right wing wing Republican, asked asked Butts why the party of Lincoln was not able to attract more blacks. Fair enough. Yes. The secretary responded with a line so obscene and insulting to blacks that it forced him out of the cabinet last last week and jolted the Ford campaign. But said that, quote, mind you, this is not my quote. This is Earl this Butts. This is Earl Butts. Secretary of Agriculture, Richard I Nixon. I do not employ this term. Whenever I talk about black people, I usually say blacks. Very rarely do I say African Americans. I don't use this term. It's not... The N word. This is Earl Butts. This is Earl Butts, circa Nixon. 1976, <laughs> talking to John Dean and Pat Boone. <laughs> the only thing the coloreds are looking for in life are tight pussy, loose shoes, and a warm place to shit. Unquote. Um, wow. Wow. What the fuck? Like, first off, I read that quote. I'm offended as a white man because I'm like, look. That's all I'm looking for in life. It's like black community doesn't have a fucking corner market on those things. I like tight pussy, loose shoes, and a warm place to shit. I don't care about loose shoes so much. Yeah. But tight pussy and a warm place to shit describes pretty much what every man probably wants. That's the American dream. Exactly. Could you imagine though, fucking being Pat Boone? <laughs> yeah, like didn't. That, but what do you think Pat Boone and John Dean did? Were they like, <gasps> or were they just like, you ain't kidding? Like, what did they say? How do you respond to that in 1976? Well, I mean, I'm sure that if Pat Boone were here, he might say it differently. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you generally, generally speaking, unless you're completely the most inappropriate human being in the world, you know your audience. Mm-hmm. So maybe Earl Butts was, you know, maybe he had a couple scotches and didn't know any better. <laughs> Or you're just that guy. Or you're, you're just from that the Midwest. Guy. Like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, Pat Boone. Totally. Here's you're from, my fucking shit. You're from the you're from the sticks. You know, you're a fucking farmer. You don't know any better. Yeah, it's just that, and that was the olden. Well, days. It was, if he said it to two of them, one of them obviously. I ain't excusing it. I'm just yeah. saying, like that's obviously one of those two guys had to have relayed that story somebody. to somebody. Mm-hmm. I think Pat Boone should come forward. <laughs> And and say that whether like, he was the guy. Who the fuck's Earl Butts? Yeah. Um, it said. Uh, wow. In any case, according to the Washington Post, anyone familiar with Beltway politics could have not the tiniest doubt in your mind as to which cabinet officer uttered it because it was a blind statement. They didn't say he said it. They just said a guy. Um, and that's how it got out. What if it was Pat Boone? <laughs> I guess um, he was no center. While the Associated Press sent the uncensored joke over the wire, mind you, in 76, uh, Columbia Journalism Review says that only two newspapers, the Toledo, Ohio Blade and the Madison, Wisconsin Capital Times, published the remark unchanged. Wow. Um, others uh, bolderized the quote, in some cases replacing the feline reference with a tight Parentheses obscenity on parentheses, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the scatological reference with a warm place to parentheses vulgarism and parentheses. Nobody bothered to fucking replace coloreds. 
Like they're like, we gotta change. We can't put pussy in a newspaper, and you can't put shit in a newspaper. But you were they fucking they were like colors is okay. Yeah. How crazy is that? The Lubbock Avalanche Journal said the original statement was available in the newspaper office. More than two hundred people stopped by to read it. Wow. <laughs> people were like, "What is it? What are the two words?" Like you I couldn't figure it out. Like if you had some free time, you're like, yeah. "What word is it, man?" They're like, Here you "Well, go. if we were, like let's say you were in Highlands and you were like the mayor of Highlands fucking said something fucked up, and you were like." You could kind of surmise what it was, but all you had to do was walk down to the, the what's the paper in Highland? The Courier. The Courier. All you had to do is walk over to the Courier, and they'd be like, this is what he said. You would walk over there. I would. I'd be <laughs> like, what did he say? Did he say a tight asshole? <laughs> I said, I got an asshole. I bet Brian eight bucks it was asshole. Oh, I'm thinking it's, it's asshole. It's not pussy. Is it? Pussy's too lame. Why did you leave pussy out of the paper? 